morning, fans of Privateer FX. Coming at you 22 July. It's a Monday. Quiet one. The calendar is absolutely bare. Literally nothing. We've got BOJ Kuroda speaking. Um, RBA Assistant Governor Kent speaking. Uh, just atrociously quiet on the calendar side and prices reflect uh, the fact that nothing is going on in FX. We had some geopolitical news obviously over the weekend uh, with Iran seizing the Stena Imperio, Imperio tanker, UK tanker with an international crew. Uh, this didn't cause really much of a stir at all. Uh, everything is where we left it on Friday, give or take. Uh, some of the key levels um, out there, Euro-Yen, Euro-Sterling, two super important levels now. We printed 77.8 last night in Euro-Yen which is really just kind of astounding that we didn't plow through this uh, 12080. Uh, so now we have one, two, three, uh, three lows down there since June. I, I don't know what to say. Uh, we had some negative geopolitical news. This should have gone much, much lower. And here we are, 12111. don't really know what to do with this. I'm of two minds now. Uh, obviously a lot of the guys who are pre-trading this sort of inevitable CTA break trade down there are going to get caught. But on the same token, nothing's going on, so I'm not really going to chase this either way. But if this were a normal market, you would probably break trade both sides of this. You would leave an entry at 121.30, and you would also leave an entry at 120.80, uh, and just be open-minded that we might have placed a triple bottom there, and this thing can go higher. Today on the dailies, if we close above 30, which is not really a big deal, it's bullish engulfing at the at the lows. Uh, and on the more logical side, you would say. Boons are yielding 32, minus 32 basis points. Euro going into a Euro Yen, uh, going into a ECB week. Good chance Euro, Euro Yen gets smashed. Um, we're not sure what we're going to do. We're going to take it very, very slowly here on this Monday. I don't think um, there's going to be a lot going on out here, so we're not going to chase this. Either way, we might have some social social trading with that strategy on your yen, but nothing serious as of yet. Euro sterling also uh, 55 the low, so we did actually get below this super important, I would say, 56 level. Um, but really, one point at the open doesn't really count right so if you look at this on the four hours we have this whatever you want to call it the beginnings of a head and shoulders you want to call it a quadruple bottom you want to call it whatever it is one two three four five six seven daily lows down there at 55 again on any normal market uh, people would be sharpening their knives getting ready to smash this thing lower uh, but because it's dead and because the way FX is trading right now, you just want to dial it back a bit, not get overexcited uh, about what's going on. But this is a very, very key level, 89, 55. Let's look at equities. They eventually did uh, take a bit of a digger on, uh, on Friday. Last three hours of trade, um, bang, bang, bang. We went from uh, 3,000 down to 29.70. On the dailies, it looks, um, you know, looked pretty weak there. Didn't quite.
white bearish engulf close below the daily lows here but looks pretty weak the most important uh, number out here I guess is now this 2964 which should lead into this gap fill of 2945 we're still negative uh, on this market and this week uh, there'll be loads and loads of earnings so there will be real data driving this not just how people feel about it there will be earnings data driving this thing we have alphabet we have a whole slew of earnings what else do we have is I'll put it up on Twitter but we have a whole slew of earnings this week um, that's going to drive drive this S&P and so you want to watch that a lot of it a lot of the stuff is after the close uh, some of the stuff is pre-open so just get your calendar out and look at earnings this week uh, some of the big big names are going to be releasing I guess as a strategy today uh, you want to sell this anywhere between uh, 2985 and 3000 What else is out there? Dollar Max. This was of interest. Yeah, this huge head and shoulders here in Dollar Max. Right shoulder here, head here, left shoulder here. The neckline, uh, 1886. I don't know what's going to drive this. Um, but uh, you got to keep a real close eye on 1886 and even you might be able to start shorts now below 1892 this is now two daily lows in the last week but this pattern um, looks like it wants to resolve itself we're not going to pre-trade it with shorts up here but as we get uh, closer to the neckline We'll have to look at the stories and see what's out there. Dollar max downside looks interesting. Gold. Too many people are long gold right now that don't understand why they're long gold or what's going on with gold or just have a gold ETF. Ray Dalio says gold. Paul Tudor Jones says gold. I'm not denying that gold is probably going to go higher. Um with all of these dovish central banks being so dovish but uh, just be super careful long gold we're at this stage of the move where both bulls and bears are, are getting their asses kicked right so you can't buy high ones you can't sell low ones what you want to do is you want to buy extreme low ones so you can remember when we were sitting down here at 86 it looked really really bearish um, we were buying b between 90 and 85 that paid nicely uh, you can see those who break traded 1441 uh, got their asses kicked I think it was Tuesday last week we bought 18s maybe it was Thursday Thursday we bought 18s in that sort of 1418 1423 area that was the day it shot up to 50 overnight it went up to 55 that paid so we were buying extreme low ones this is no different there'll be stops now below this sort of death knock area 1413 there'll also be more stops between 1402 you want to buy extreme low ones in gold as everyone's getting chopped to bits now this style of trading is extremely difficult um, and the risk reward is often upside down so if you're not used to this style of trading or you you're not used to gold in general just skip it you know, there's plenty of other shit to trade um, but to me this market is filled with too many tourists who never trade gold who now own gold a little bit too early let's face it this gold trade is going to be a combination of lower rates globally and risk off 
the risk off has not materialized at all um, and we need some evidence of lower rates so we need ECB this Thursday and we need FOMC at the end of the month to confirm so look for some more choppy action in gold and if you're brave you want to be buying very extreme low ones what else is out there I think that's about it we got this dollar CAD which could not uh, live above that key 130.95 for us the top side the the top side is is bookended by 131.45 and now the downside is bookended by 130.15 um, a break on either side is very important to us in the meantime we're just going to stay away from this I guess you could continue to sell sell rallies but this does look like it's about to turn higher and this is getting a bit old the long CAD trade is getting getting a bit old too many people are long CAD so my guess is this is going to make a move higher before it goes lower but it's data dependent um, we went up on Friday because we had weaker retail sales. So patience in in dollar CAD. Um, that's about it. I mean, basically, we're going in today, uh, hands behind our backs. No crazy trading planned. We're going to be patient. A little bit scarred from last week where we were just punching ourselves in the face, some good trades, some bad trades, and another good trade, and another bad trade. Uh, when we see ourselves doing this, it's best to step back, take a deep breath, be patient, um, save your bullets, save your energy for the second half of this week, which is going to be much, much more interesting. We have PMIs on Wednesday, we obviously have ECB um, on Thursday, and then US GDP on Friday so save your energy and be patient today that's all I got for you I will see you all tomorrow morning ciao